Yeah, this Maximus here, this time with just a quick and simple review of rolling tools and various rollers, which would initially seem to be a tool that might be esoteric and you wouldn't use it much until you have some and kind of realize, uh, as well as, you know, do homework and various projects on how handy various types of rollers can be. And we have a few different styles. We have like carpet rollers. Uh, we have laminate rollers. We have smaller, like these would be seam and tape rollers. We have some, you know, small handled rubber rollers. Even some soft rollers, which I believe may be related to artwork and paint, but I found quite a bit of use for them. We even have some seam rollers here. Let's take a look at some of these odd ones with the small wheels. These are screen door or bug screen rollers and replacement tools. Now in bug screen around windows, you have a screen and then there's like a little channel, a little pocket that this corrugated plastic, it's not rope, but it's plastic kind of string or line. And then the, you are always, a lot of people I've seen, they replace them when they're using like a slot head screwdriver or something to slowly push it in. They actually make special tools and that is these rollers. And it's specific, these are specifically designed for exactly that purpose, just getting the plastic string down in that seam on top of the screen that you've cut just a little bit oversized so it sits in that pocket. And they usually come with one rounded roller just to help push it in. And then they also come with a roller that has a channel in it to make it kind of stay centered on the string and keep the string centered on the tool. This would be, they're usually very cheap tools because they don't do, you know, they just do a simple job. But this is a uh, Slideco one, and this is uh, a pretty nice one just because it has a cast metal body versus uh, most of them are wooden. Then we also have this premium grade uh, screen type uh, roller knife. I believe roller knife is the name of the company. And they use a plastic roller, but it is a pretty nice, you know, modern. It does use nut and bolt uh, to keep it assembled, which I do like. Uh, real nice ergonomic finger grip and a really nice oversized wheel, which is a grooved wheel, so you can get that string in there real fast and easy. And it's actually more designed for that because in the handle here, which has a very stiff switch, they use uh, the standard size utility knife blades that have the hook cutter in them. And these are, you know, sold at all hardware stores. And so you can put over the screen, use the hook cutter in the channel to cut the screen, and then it's immediately the correct size. And then you can just put away the cutter and be able to use the wheel to push in the string line. And just wanted to point out that there are some pretty nice handy tools that can make replacing screens uh, just a job that takes a couple of minutes. I have an odd kind of corrugated little roller here and I do use this on screen doors just to get it around the sharp corners to push it in a little bit tighter. I'm not exactly sure what it was intended for but when I saw it I thought that's exactly what I'd end up using it for is just really getting the Just getting the sharp corners in there. Sorry for that awkward pause, a little interruption. So then we have seam rollers here, and we'll start off with this. Now, the reason you'd use a lot of these rollers is many times there's flat, there's flat goods and items that you have to glue, and you really need the rollers. Things like wallpaper, you know, linoleum flooring, uh, formica laminate countertops. The metal kick plates on commercial doors oftentimes are entirely glued as well as have a few screws around the corner to, corners that prevent the corners from getting kicked up. And so that's a lot of applications. Uh, applying adhesive tape, depending on where you're doing your taping, not so much for like painters or really drywall tape, uh, but what's Surprising is if you're applying masking tape on a variety of situations, having these different styles of rollers is pretty nice to be able to get uh, a good adhesion. If you're doing, say, a window tinning, you would want to rollers both of these styles, actually. This roller, and I'm sorry to switch it up a little bit there, but this is like a painting roller, and it's real squishy, as you can see. But what makes this a huge advantage is you can use it on, like, headliners, uh, all sorts of automotive ap applications, headliners, window tinting. Lots of times there are exterior panels that are both held in by, you know, glue tape and, and clips. And oftentimes it's hard to press with your hand and really get it even. So if you have a nice soft roller, you can go along and just apply lots of even pressure. Sorry about that camera bump. And that's kind of where this comes in. I've used this quite often. Like when you're doing a headliner, you use a spray can adhesive, use a wider roller, 
I uh, like the soft one to get most of it up and then to get into the corners that's what this is this has a 30 degree bend and you can get right along a flat surface and really roll right into a, a very tight edge and I've used this quite a bit I'm not exactly sure uh, what it's intended to use for although I should be able to look it up crlawrence.com I've also used this sometimes with masking tape where I need to push the tape right into a nice corner. It's been real surprising with what seemed like an odd uh, roller, and there's a part number, VR04, uh, would be so useful to me, but it really has. And then the other side, it actually has this kind of finger, hard finger, so you can actually press and really get things you know, real nice and tight. And I really have appreciated that. I'm sure they're using upholstery and that kind of thing. Uh, this is a, just a regular hand roller. Uh, for a while in high school, I was doing uh, publications, and so you'd cut out like sections of the story and the graphics, and then you'd uh, wax and paper, and then you'd do a paste up. So it'd be like manual version of page layout, known as page uh, paste up. And then you'd use rollers like this just to roll it out. And I found that this is really handy in a variety of situations when I'm doing any kind of small gluing, especially of any kind of flat surfaces, which seems to be pretty often if you're applying stickers, it's really nice just to roll them on, and you can make sure they have a good adhesion. These bigger, heavier duty rollers, like this one known as a J roller, as you can see right here, is made for Formica countertops. It's made to hold with two hands so you can get a bit more force on it um, or any type of laminate. And they, uh, it works pretty well. It has a nice rubber wheel but with an internal uh, wooden core. And this just allows you to get a bit more force so you can really press and get a good, strong adhesion. And finally, this is known as a carpet roller, the ones with all these spikes. Sometimes they mention using these with such as wallpaper, but you know I don't recommend it because it leaves little dots. Although the idea of the little points is to create a high contact or high pressure areas to really get good contact. The reason these are known as a carpet seam roller is when you have a big area where you have two pieces of carpet that come together, you really want to get... You oftentimes can't use a tack strip because it'll leave a bump in the middle, so you have to just glue the carpet down. Now, when you're doing that carpeting, uh, it can be tough. You're you know you're stuck walking on it, you know, doing all sorts of uh, you know strange activities in motion, trying to tamp down the entire seam of the carpet so it looks like just one piece. And so that's what these rollers are for. They allow you to roll it on. Uh, the little spikes get through the pile of the carpet so they'll press down deeper and really get you good adhesion. And the spikes have the double duty of also kind of pulling on the fibers along the edge so it kind of blends that edge. And there's often times where just a proper application of these rollers, not only do you get a real good well glued carpet seam, but it can blend the seam to the point to where you can't see it. And it may show up after wear and you know, use over months and years. Uh, but initially, you can use one of these, and man, it's amazing. It can make the seam just disappear, and it's surprising. I've replaced sections of carpet, cut them accurately, and use this just to get paste down the new section, and it looked like you know nothing ever happened. A J roller is good for that too when you have kind of the thinner, more office style carpet. Anyway, this was just a quick and simple video talking about rollers. We have some of the these wooden ones. Let me talk about these real fast. Uh, these are just like basic tape rollers. Uh, this is a little Red Devil, and uh, it's a pretty basic one. You can see how cheap they get plastic. Then they get a little more expensive. This is a Hyde, and it's an American-made one. It has a nice wooden wheel. It works pretty well, um, but it is just one arm. And then what we have here is uh, this Allway SR1, which is a premium-grade roller. And it's a nice wooden roller, but you can see it has two thick arms, so it's fully balanced. Um, and it's kind of surprising that even, you know, collecting tools, simple tools like these rollers, these are all three intended for the same purpose, but there's dramatically different build qualities. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching, and uh, please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.